The Israeli army says that four soldiers have been killed in combat with Hezbollah militants in southern Lebanon. In a statement released Thursday, the Israeli military said 11 other troops were wounded during fighting with Hezbollah the day before, without elaborating on what happened. The announcement makes Wednesday one of the deadliest days of Israel's offensive in Lebanon, which it invaded over three weeks ago after a year of exchanging cross-border fire with Hezbollah. Israel has expanded its campaign in the country on its northern border, increasing airstrikes against Hezbollah targets across the country. Israel's military casualties have begun to climb in southern Lebanon, with another four soldiers killed by a Hezbollah drone attack earlier this month. In a speech Thursday, Israel's military chief lieutenant Jen Herzi Halavai signaled that Israel hoped to wrap up its operations in Lebanon. In the north, there's a possibility of reaching a sharp conclusion, Halavai said. We thoroughly dismantled Hezbollah's senior chain of command. Rock. امبارح بالليل الساعة تقريبا الساعة ثنتين ونص يعني صار علينا هجوم يعني شيء ست ضربات وراح من عندنا سبع شهداء يعني من العمال من حرس المصفاية وتقريبا حوالي 17 واحد جريح يعني كل عمال فقيره قاعد تشتغل بالمصفايه تترزق وما يعني ما لا هي منشاه عسكريه ولا شيء أكيد أكيد بدها يصير ضرر على المازوت على البنزين يعني على الغاز يعني بشكل عام لأنه هاي المصفاية يعني هالمصافي هاي المصافين الوحيدة اللي بالمنطقة اللي تشتغل بتغذي المنطقة إذا وقفت ما ما عليها لا مازوت ولا لا بنزين ولا شيء يعني بدها تصير أزمة يعني بالبلد بدها تصير أزمة لأنه هي المصفاية اللي تغذي المنطقة Russia has been heavily relying on refurbishing older tanks, such as the T-72, T-62, and T-55-54 models, from its Soviet-era stockpiles. Most of its current tank fleet on the battlefield is relying on tanks no longer in production. While this has allowed Russia to preserve more advanced tanks like the T-90M, Russia's Soviet reserves are depleting quickly, and the tank fleet is on a sharp decline. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, the Russian armed forces have removed almost all of their T-80 tanks from storage, 90%. The Omsk 22nd storage base for T-80 tanks of the Russian armed forces has been completely emptied. Satellite images of the base also confirm this. Also, since February 24, 2024, the Russian armed forces have lost almost a thousand units of this type of tank. Very soon, these tanks will cease to exist in service with the Russian Federation, and this is a very, very good tank. Basically, the tanks remaining in storage in the Russian Federation are T-62, T-64 and T-72 of the most shaggy years. Ascent analyst at HIMARST, who tracks open-air storages and shares insights on X, provides a more detailed assessment. He reported that by July 6, 2024, Russia's stock of T-55s had dropped by 31%, T-62s by 37%, 
and T-80BS by 79%, with only 9% of T-72s removed from storage. While these figures may not be exact, they provide a good idea about the rapid depletion of Russia's tank reserves. Given that since the beginning of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has lost over 3,000 tanks. Information that can be independently confirmed by open-source projects such as Oryx or Warspotting. Russia has lost more tanks than it had in its entire pre-war active duty tank force, as well as and over 30% of its most advanced self-propelled artillery and multiple rocket launcher systems. A report from senior analyst Dara Masakot, published by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, further details that Russia is expected to exhaust its stockpile of multiple Soviet-era military equipment by 2026. As the initial invasion has evolved into an attritional war, understanding the enemy's will to fight, their resources, and their ability to replace losses becomes critical in order to calculate the trajectory of war. Any attritional war ultimately becomes a test of societal endurance, war economics, diplomacy, and the ability to replace losses. As the war drags on, these problems intensify, pushing one side closer to a tipping point where continuing the war worsens their position. Military production and the capacity to replace losses are among the war's tangible factors that can be calculated and projected well.